Today we're going to take a look at Neuron Writer. And the main purpose of Neuron Writer is it's going to help you with content optimization, with SEO optimization. It performs some of the critical things that you would need to do, which is sort of that competitor analysis, understanding what pages are ranking for your keywords, and then what phrases and, and terms do you need to have within your blog post to create a better on-page SEO, which hopefully will help you rank better. Now, there is no magic pill to ranking number one in Google. Neuron Writer performs a piece of what you need to do for ranking purposes. It's a tool that's been around for quite some time. It's very popular. Lots of people use it. Now, when I show you how to use Neuron Writer today, you'll notice that I don't talk about the writing capability of this tool at all. And the reason I don't do that is because I think a dedicated AI writer performs better than what Neuron Writer can do in the AI writing space. Doesn't mean you can't use it for AI writing. I just think a dedicated tool works better. So before people send in questions about that, I figured I'd address that right up front. So let's go ahead and jump right into Neuron Writer and get started. So the first thing that you would do in Neuron Writer is you need to create a content query and it's based on whatever keyword that you're targeting. I'm going to do one on something that I enjoy doing, which is still water fly fishing. So I'm going to do still water fly fishing techniques. And so let's go ahead and I'll enter that. So there you go. Still water fly fishing techniques. Uh, all you need to do is just click start and it starts that query. So you can see over in the far right here where my cursor arrow is, it's performing that query. It takes a little bit of time to do it, typically maybe a minute or two to complete a query. All right, so the query's completed. So the next step that you do is you just go over and you click right on the title of the keyword we're targeting, which is still water fly fishing techniques. And that's going to take you to a page of all the competition that you're going to have to rank against. This is a critical piece when you're using Neuron Writer because you want to make sure that you're going to target competition that has written articles that are closely aligned with what you're attempting to write. I'll show you what I mean here. You want to look at these titles and make sure that they're aligned with the type of article that you're writing, which is specifically about still water fly fishing techniques. One thing that I don't want to rank against is a YouTube video. So I'm going to uncheck this. And here's another one, best trout fly rods of 2025. That has nothing to do with the article that we want to write. Now you may ask, why did this get brought back into the competition? Now this is OutdoorLife.com. It's a website that's been around for probably since the inception of the web. And so it has a very high domain authority and it probably talks about still water fly fishing rods somewhere in the article, which is causing it to rank in the top 10. I don't want to have an article that's written about fly rods. I'm only interested in still water fly fishing techniques. So I'm going to uncheck that. Uh, I look for Reddit as well. Reddit's user generated content. I'm not going to try to rank against a forum or user generated content. So I'll uncheck this. Then what I'm going to do is go through and see if there's any other articles that uh, I can choose because here I've selected one, two, three, four. I've selected seven. I usually like to have a minimum of eight to nine. Everything that you need to know about still water fly fishing, that would be one that I'd want to rank against. A starter's guide to fly fishing still water. We'll go with that. And then once we've selected the articles that we want to try to outrank, what we'll do is we're going to click next. And while we're going to the next page, the thing that I want to make you aware of is you are watching the workflow that I would typically use for writing uh, a blog post using Neuron Writer in conjunction with my AI writer. So it's my typical workflow and that's why I'm sharing it with you. The next thing that I would do is I look at a few things here. The one thing that I want to look at is 
Right at the top here, you'll see 76. So the highest of all selected competitors scores out as a 76. That's what we're shooting for is we're trying to optimize our article. So we're getting as close to the 76 target as we can. It doesn't have to be, you know, exactly 76 or surpass it, but it would be nice to be, you know, within five points of that if we could get the article there. And we'll talk about how you get an article to a certain optimized score here in a little bit. Once we've looked at that, another thing that I like to look at is I go over to where it says words and I mouse over the amount of words. So you can see that the average number of words in an article was around 1,400 for the competition that we selected, while nine of the URLs in the top 30 that were returned have an average of 2,224 words. So what we're going to be shooting for is an article probably between 15 and 2,500 words. I think that would be perfect. So um, that makes a difference because when you're using a dedicated AI writer, many times the AI writers ask you, do you want to write a small, medium, or large article? So it's important to uh, know what number of words you're shooting for, and that's why I like to look at that particular information. The next thing that I'm going to do is add a title, and Neuron Writer will generate that title for you automatically. You don't have to use it. You can write your own title if you want to. But what it's going to try to do is it's going to look at these different terms and phrases that are dealing with still water fly fishing. It's going to try to enter those into the title to make it more SEO friendly. We'll just go ahead and say generate. I don't like this title, a beginner's fly fishing still water, a beginner's guide to catching trout slow. That doesn't make sense to me, but when you look over here, it says fly fishing slow for still water trout. That's why it's added slow because it's seen that in the competitor's metadata. I don't like that. That doesn't really resonate with me. I'm going to go ahead and just delete that. But you just need to look at it and see if the title makes sense for your niche. We'll just go with that. And you can see that it's used one, two, three, four of the terms. So that should really be helpful in the scoring. If you want to, you can generate a meta description and just click generate and it'll create that for you. This description isn't going to make a big difference in the overall SEO scoring because Google will sometimes use your meta descriptions that you enter yourself, and other times it will just take a piece of your article and use it as the meta description. But I just generate it because at least when I publish the article, I've got to have that. So we'll just save and close. And you can see right now, just by virtue of using the words that were part of this title, we're already at a 32. So we're, you know, on our way to getting up toward a 76. What's critical here? What do we need to do next? So I want to point out here are the basic terms that you'd like to have in the article. You can see a whole bunch of them here. These are all the terms that our competition is using, and we'd want to have those in our article as well. The more basic terms that you can put in your article naturally, the higher your score will be. Then there's extended terms that are loosely related with our topic of still water fly fishing techniques. You'd want to have those in your article where you can as well. The other thing that causes an SEO optimization score to increase would be your headings. So this title is my H1 heading that I'll end up using on my post. For example, let me just copy this quickly and I'll show you something. Now, I don't use WordPress. I use a tool called Publii, and this is the post title, which is actually the H1 tag for the post. Fly fishing, still water, a beginner's guide to catching trout. This is my H1 tag. You really only want to have one H1 tag when you create a blog post. You might want to check out your template just to see is this thing that they call the title really the H1, or do you need to have an H1 in the body of your post? You just want to have one H1 tag, and then you can have multiple H2s, H3s, H4s, but typically a blog post should only have one H1. So I just want to go back over here. We're back in Neuron Writer again, 
And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take the basic and extended terms and copy them. And the reason I do that is because if you're not using Neuron Writer to create your article, and like I said, it does have AI writing tools, but it's not the way that I prefer to write an article. I like a dedicated writer. You're going to want to copy these for SEO purposes because your AI writer is going to ask for these terms. I'm going to copy these. So I select copy, list of visible terms. Then I go over to Google Docs. I just drop it in because I need to do this to clean it up just a bit. I'm going to remove this phrase, extended terms. So I do that. And then everything that's above this basic text terms, I'm going to delete because those aren't needed for my AI writer. And most AI writers will only want the basic and extended terms. The next thing that I do is I go to my dedicated AI writer. I happen to use seowriting.ai. My typical tool set is I use Low Fruits for keyword research. I use Neuron Writer for SEO optimization purposes. I use SEO writing for creating my actual blog posts themselves. I've got this all pre-set up. The only thing that I don't have is I haven't put into the SEO section. I've got to put those terms in that we just copied. That's what SEO writing is going to use. They're, it's going to try to use these terms when it creates the article. The next thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that I put a title in. It's required by SEO writing. And this isn't meant to be an SEO writing tutorial, so I'm not going through all of the other things that I did for article setup purposes. I just need to generate this outline quickly. I've got my outline and now I can write my article. In this case, I just click run on SEO writing. Once the article is created, what I'll do is I'll drop it in here back into the Neuron Writer interface and we'll see how close we get to that score of 76. Now, in the video description, I do have a link to Neuron Writer. It's a lifetime deal. You can still get this tool as a lifetime deal. And so you can buy in at different levels. I suggest buying in at least at the gold level or tier three. That's going to give you access to the most capabilities in the tool. If you need an AI writer or you're not satisfied with the one that you have now, make sure and check out my link for SEO writing and my discount code for 25% off. If you don't, don't have a keyword tool, um, check out my link for low fruits. You get 10% off with my discount code. Let's see if the article is done. The article's completed. This is what I'm going to take. I'm going to copy this article, bring it into Neuron Writer. As with any AI written article, I'm going to just mention, please fact check it. You want to do that. You want to edit it. And of course, you want to add your own spin on the article, adding information from your experience. And in this case, I've done a ton of still water fly fishing. I would go in here and interject my own experience to make this article as unique as possible. So remember, before I copy this article in, we were at a score of 32. We're shooting to try to get as close to 76 as we can. Now, there is one critical piece of information that I want to share. If you look and you see top 10 in Google average, score of 50. So while we do have one outlier that has a score of a 76 for an SEO optimization score, the average score across the top 10 articles that rank for this particular keyword is 50. We're trying to get at least to the 50 point and as close to 76 as we can. Let's go ahead and put the article in and see what the score turns out to be. Now, the one thing that I need to do, I'm going to delete this H1. And the reason I'm doing that is my template uses this title as the H1. So I don't need an H1 in the body of my post. After taking out the H1, that leaves me at a 68. So I'm at a 68, which is still a very good score. It's very close to 76. I want to point out a few things here. Now, in this article, trout is mentioned 41 times. It says that the suggested number of uses is 6 to 16 times, and that's why this is red. Now, is this going to hurt you with ranking? 
If you over-optimize certain keywords or phrases, it could possibly affect your ranking. But if you read through the article, and again, I mentioned you need to edit the article, you want to look for places if you can substitute trout with cutthroat or brown or some other species of trout, if it makes sense. But if you read the article and it uses trout and it makes sense, and there's not a lot of other words you can use for the term trout, I don't worry about it too much. Uh, here's still water fly fishing. It shows that it's red. There's just no other term for still water fly fishing. So if it makes sense to have it in the article, leave it there. Because really, you're creating this article for people to read and it needs to be readable. And, you know, that's far more important than, you know, creating an article for an SEO optimization purpose, right? Because if, if the article's not readable, people aren't going to stay on the article. They're going to leave and they're not going to perhaps come across your advertising or affiliate links, things like that. If you look at some of these scores that are in yellow, that's just a little bit of an indication that, you know, you might be getting close to over-optimizing. One thing that you want to do when you're looking through your basic terms, if there's any of them that are unused and they can be naturally added into the article at some point when you edit, that will boost the score. Now, these extended terms typically require you to add maybe three or four of the extended terms to boost the score up a point. Another place that you can also boost your score is you can go to the headings and you can look and see what headings were used in the H2 and H3s. So it's possible that, for instance, under H2 and H3 terms, there's a ton of them that weren't used. Let's say we wanted to add a section on flies for still water. If we took this term, flies for still water, and made it an H2, notice the score went up to a 69. And then if you had that section flies for still water, then you could go through here and you could add things like indicator fly and some of the other fly related types of terms. I'd go into the extended terms, look for flies like this, you know, any of these terms you could add in the section on flies for still water and that would boost your score some more. So you can see how Neuron Writer does a great job with the SEO optimization. The SEO optimization, or in this case, really it's content optimization, is part of on-page SEO. And part of on-page SEO is your content optimization using H2s and H3s and an H1 that also optimize that score. Other ways that you can boost your score when you're in WordPress, for example, like if I go here and I go into my post slug, notice that I'm using a post slug called Stillwater Fly Fishing Techniques, right? And the reason I'm using Stillwater Fly Fishing Techniques is that's my keyword that I'm targeting. One part of on-page SEO is to use the URL, typically called a post slug, that matches the keyword that I'm targeting. And then in my meta description, in this post, I discuss the typical stillwater fly fishing techniques. So right here, I've included stillwater fly fishing techniques in my meta description. Using it in the URL structure, making sure that you use it in the meta description, using it in your H1, that's all on-page SEO. Now, you may be familiar with a term called off-page SEO. Another critical piece of your whole SEO plan is how do I get backlinks, right? Backlinks are very important. So if you can get backlinks to your site, have sites that have high domain authority, if they link back to you, Google likes that and gives you better page rankings. Neuron Writer is very good at helping you achieve the SEO optimization component for ranking, but it's not the only thing that you need to be doing when you're trying to get a page to rank. There's a lot of other factors that come into play. This is just one piece of it. I highly recommend the tool. I've been using it for a long time. I've got lots of videos on Neuron Writer that you can take a look at and see some more detail. I hope you found this video helpful. Until next time, take care.